The Run With Manny Wilson podcast is brought to you by Fifth Investments. Investing is the easiest way to double your money, especially when you do it right. Most of us need help with getting started, right? I'm telling you right now, Fifth Investments is the easiest way to take your first step. You can sign up for the daily trading journal, weekly newsletter, including trade ideas, market analysis, news, and information on navigating the stock market. They got you covered with long-term, short-term, options trading, and more. So go to fifthinvestments.com and use the promo code The Run for $20 off your premier membership or just sign up for free. Trade the stock market and perfect a skill that's going to last you a lifetime. The information is not trading or investment advice. The newsletter is only a personal blog that is being offered publicly for general information purposes only. Give him the damn respect if you don't have nothing else to say, at least to the press. You don't run away from that. To me, that's bro, that's a, that's a punk move. And then from a leader of that team, John Morant, to kind of do the same exact thing of running away from the media and not saying nothing. That's a punk move, bro. They lost a lot of my respect. Now tuned into the greatest. The Run. Manny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. Now, I appreciate you tuning in, man, to the first interactive sports podcast, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something throughout the show, just give us a call at 219-413-9405 and make sure we play your take back for the next episode. Now, it's a lot going on today, man. It's a 3-1 frenzy. So many teams in the playoffs right now are up 3-1 or down 3-1. Obviously, you know, the Tank and Gervonta Davis and and Ryan Garcia fight happened. We didn't really get to talk about that, so we'll have a little bit of words. And the biggest thing that's going on in the NFL world is Aaron Rodgers going to the New York Jets. So if you haven't heard about that, boom, there it is. (laughs) But look, starting off is the 3-1 frenzy. We're kicking it off with the New York Knicks because I don't know why, but (laughs) this is a shocker. Actually, I know why. Nobody expects the Knicks to win anything but New York Knicks fans. They have a good team. We've all known that. We've known the Knicks have been pretty solid so far this year. But for them to be handling the Cavaliers like this, I've been pretty shocked. I will admit. And it gets even worse for the Cleveland Cavaliers because throughout the entire course of the playoff history, the New York Knicks have won 11 of the 13 total playoff matchups against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I highly doubt the Cavs are going to come back from this 3-1 league. I highly doubt Donovan Mitchell is going to put up a 70-point win, send it to six, and then win again in seven. And I I highly doubt all of that stuff is going to happen because Jalen Brunson has been balling. He's averaging 24 this series. And then including Brunson, you got four other guys that's averaging double digits in this series. So that alone tells you that how much the Knicks have been balling as a team. And again, we've known they've had some skill. We've known what they're capable of, but but to see it come together this way, I'm really appreciating the basketball that they're displaying because it's great. And then to add for those who are really speculating about the Cavs possibly coming back, here's here's what I have to say about that. I, I just want to diminish all of your hope, to be honest, because it's not happening. If you think that, you need to get that out of your head, period. Because the Cavs, <laughs> they don't have enough, honestly. They, they haven't been as consistent so far. But to hit you with some factors, man, the Knicks, they've never lost the series after leading three to one in the playoffs. They've never lost a game five after leading three to one in the playoffs. And the last time the Knicks have played a series and were up three and one against a team in the playoffs and finished it out game five. The last time that happened was against who? The Cleveland Cavaliers (laughs) in like 94 or 95. So I'm just telling you right now, the Cavs, they're a good team. I I had high expectations for them actually all season, but it just seems to go down the drain when the Knicks match up so well on the defensive end, match up so well on the offensive end, and just been running these boys out the gym. So credit to the Cavs for doing their thing here. We got some voicemails, too, that's going to talk about it in just a sec. But the other 3-1 to one team that I kind of want to bring up here is the, 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 the Milwaukee Bucks and the Miami Heat. Miami Heat, they got the Bucs down 3-1. Who would have thought that a play-in team would have a number one seed down Three to one. Now, kudos to Jimmy Butler because he went off. If you didn't watch game four, 
He went off. Put up 56 points, nine rebounds, and shot 67%. So he balled out, and it's the most in a playoff game by any player wearing a Miami Heat jersey. And that's saying a lot because you got LeBron there. You got D-Wade there. You got, man, you got so many legends that wore a Miami Heat uniform. But ultimately, here's what I have to say about this possibility of the Milwaukee Bucks coming back. I know who the Bucks have. I know there's a guy named Giannis Antetokounmpo who is him, and he hasn't been healthy all the way, but you cannot use that as an excuse because the Miami Heat has also been playing through injuries. They recently lost Victor Aladipo in Game 3, who's a pivotal player on this Miami Heat team. The only thing that's really separating these two and the reason that the Miami Heat are leading the Series 3-1 is because they're playing out of desperation every single game. Yes, I get the Milwaukee Bucks have a solid, complete team that can possibly come back. If any team were to do it, I would believe that it's the Milwaukee Bucks. But you got to keep in mind here, the Miami Heat are not going to come out and lay down. They've shown you that. They've shown they're not going to just come out and, and let Giannis do whatever. They're playing solid defense against Giannis. And I know it was his first game back the other night and he finished with a triple-double. He did. He got his. He got his. It's that simple. But also, too, the defense is not clicking over there in Milwaukee. They got to do something to slow Jimmy down and slow all of these other easy buckets down. Because even when Jimmy Butler isn't clicking, you got role players who they might not be making all of their three-pointers or making all the middies, but they're getting easy layups. They're getting easy fast break points. And that's on Milwaukee right there. They got to fix that transition defense that they, that's been broken down these past few games. So I think Milwaukee can possibly do it, but in terms of, of this series and this year, it's not going to happen. I, I say Bucks go on to win game game six. Uh, and then from there, or I, I'm sorry, I said that's so wrong, so wrong. Bucks go on to win game five, and then Miami, they close it out in six here. So that's that's my thoughts on it. We got a voicemail caller, too, who, who called in about it. Today, we only got one of them. I did kind of, I will, I will say, it, it was posted late, um, the conversation about the Knicks and the Cavs and, and um, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Miami Heat. It was supposed to kind of late, but one person, he did give us a call. So let's hear what he got to say, man. Let's What's do up, it. What's up, man? This is Chuck. We're at South Houston. What's the deal, Chuck? Man, I seen that you asked. When the Bucks come back from being down 3-1, mm. I think if anybody in the league got a chance, it's definitely the Bucks. We already know they got a well-rounded team all around. That's facts. But, you know, Giannis only played one game throughout the series. I think once he get back roller, he put up a triple dub in the loss. So once he get back roller, I see no way if they won't be able to be able to beat the Miami Heat. Mm. Also, they got to learn how to, like, just clog up the driving lanes because they just let Jimmy Butler do whatever he want to do. That is and fact. If you get him started, it ain't no stopping. So facts. He did the same thing a couple years ago in the bubble. Mm-hmm. So I believe they could just stop him and slow down because Miami Heat is injured a lot too right now. Yep. No older depot, no hero. So they could slow up the rest of the guys, Robinson and I think Gabe Vincent, them all the other guys really doing something. Mm. Bam, he a little inconsistent too. So Fast. I believe they could slow down Jimmy Butler, fog up the range. It won't be nothing to make people be inconsistent shooting. Mm. Uh, yeah, the guards, uh, the Bucks, they got to do a little bit more on the drop to drive. They kind of just been letting Jimmy Butler do whatever. So they can play a little bit better defense. They already got two seven-footers. Right. There should be no reason why they can't come back down 3-1. Now, no reason part. Nick, that's the... that series is over. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fast. The cast is just ain't that yet, man. They, just, they got a lot of pieces, a lot of decent pieces. But in terms of being able to compete with like a Knicks team who are athletic, they got a couple guys that can score. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson on fire. You know, they got an edge to him. I just don't think the Cavs is ready going into this matchup. But Darius Garner, he playing phenomenal. You know, Mitchell, he playing a little inconsistent right now, too. He's going to get back to himself. But in uh, terms of this year, nah, I just don't think it's a uh, – they're getting <laughs> out coached and they're getting outplayed. But, you mm. know, the white and whistles don't blow up till they get four games. So we'll see how it goes, bro. Yeah. Yeah, this child keeps the joy, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. I definitely appreciate you. You gave us some great insights. And you said a couple different things that I actually want to talk about, too, before I continue on. Um, One of the things you mentioned was uh, going to the Miami Heat and Bucks series, as you mentioned first. Uh, You brought up how Bam Adebayo has been fairly inconsistent and how the Miami Heat needs more from him. First off, 
he's going to be a pivotal point in if the Miami Heat can close out this series. If Bam is not coming in there to play, or if, even if he's just clicking on a defensive end, which he does fairly well, but he's definitely going to have to pick up any offensive lack or, or anything he's lacking on the offensive end on the defensive end because, man, Bam is a pivotal point, and Jimmy can't keep doing this shit on his own like this, putting up 60 points almost and shooting 67%. Like, he can't continue. He, he obviously can do it. We've seen him do it on multiple occasions, but to, to count on a man and to rely on him that much where he has to put up 56 points in order to win a game, that's that's absolutely insane. It should not ever get to that point. Um, and one of the other things you mentioned about this Bucks series, too, was that the Bucks possibly have a chance to come back. I don't think they can come back. I, I don't. I don't think they'll come back, man. They'll. I give them game five because this is Giannis's second game in this series. So I'll give them game five, but I don't think they'll win game six and game seven. You got to win three straight against the Miami Heat. That's tough. And, and honestly, three straight against any team is tough. So, to, man, that's 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 tough. That's tough. That that's tough right there. But if they get game five and game six, obviously game seven is a lot more doable. But I, I don't know. It's gonna be. It's definitely gonna be tough. All right, and the Lakers and the Memphis Grizzlies. The Lakers are leading the Grizzlies three to one right now, and I love it. Oh, wait. Now, look, this is about to end in five. 100% sure. But I, I, before I even talk about all of that, it's so much that I kind of want to discuss with the Lakers and the Memphis Grizzlies. It was so much conversation, so much talk on the Memphis Grizzlies side from their players talking about Brian can't do this. We want to play against LeBron. Uh, I can shut Brian down. Uh, Brian is old. It was so much conversation about it. So I'm loving that the Memphis Grizzlies are getting exactly what they deserve, which is an ass whooping. Oh my gosh, I love it right now. So... <laughs> This is crazy. But look, this is how I know it's going to end in five, too. Because Brian ain't never lost in the first round after being up three to one in the series. And LeBron has only went to game six after being up three to one in the series one time in his career. And it was way early on around like his first five years in the league. So that that here tells me if you about to bet on this game, you need to bet that the Lakers is going to end it in five. And I'm sure I'm sure the Lakers really want to end it in five because the Grizzlies talk so damn much. Now, before game four, you had Dylan Brooks talking crazy. Uh, whenever it was, he was saying, oh, well, LeBron, he's old. Uh, I got him under control. You just got to force him left. He was, saying, he was saying some crazy stuff, and it was low-key very disrespectful because, I mean, LeBron is the GOAT of our era now. Like, this is, this is ridiculous. It's, you can't disrespect the GOAT like that. It's, it's insane. But he learned his lesson the hard way because in the game, Brown finished with 22 points, 20 rebounds, 7 assists, and a win that put the Lakers up 3-1 to one over the Grizzlies in the total series. But also, it gets better. Brown hit a game-tying layup to send it to OT. And then he had a game-winning layup on Dylan Brooks, went to the left where Dylan Brooks said he can't go left, and ended the game off a game-winning layup in his face. So, I mean, you love to see that type of stuff. But more importantly, man, the Memphis Grizzlies, this is a wrap for them. They've proved nothing, but they are the best regular season team and probably not even the best regular season team because that's giving them too much credit. But they've proved that they are only elite in the regular season. When the playoffs come, they disappear just like they did in that press conference after game four. That's something that's just inexcusable right there. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. At, at one point, I was beginning to like Dylan Brooks, truth be told, because he was running his mouth. He plays hard, whatever. He's not the most skillful guy, but he's running his mouth. And I mean, at least he's not running from the challenge, you know, like I can I can salute to anybody who's not afraid to go up and guard LeBron. Like you got my respect up until that point. But here's where you lost my respect, bro. You can't talk all that trash. When y'all winning, when the game is close, when y'all lose off a small mistake, however it turns out, and then the game y'all get popped that's extremely crucial to the series, you don't want to say nothing. Where, where's the trash talk? You got to keep running your mouth, bro. If you're going to run your mouth when y'all winning, you better run your mouth when y'all losing. I don't give a damn if you, if you say, if you just give him the credit. That's my thing. You know LeBron is obviously the greatest player that you play basketball against and the greatest player that you probably witnessed. Just give him the damn respect if you don't have nothing else to say, at least to the press. You don't run away from that. 
To me, that's bro, that's a, that's a punk move. And then from a leader of that team, John Morant, to kind of do the same exact thing of running away from the media and not saying nothing. That's a punk move, bro. They lost a lot of my respect for that with the Memphis Grizzlies. So to them, I hope they get popped. I hope the Lakers come out and, and just really molly whop the Memphis Grizzlies in game five tonight. Cause man, this is it's insane. That's insane. That's that's extremely disrespectful. And then y'all, that's a punk move to to not even give them the respect after the game is over and at least say that was a tough shot by LeBron. I mean, he's the GOAT. Like, you could say something like that, and nobody's going to get mad because they know what you were saying in the first place was so outrageous. <laughs> like, it's insane. But look, man, we got another game, too. The Warriors and the Kings. This series is tied 2-2 two to two here. This is one of the most competitive series that we've seen so far. I love what I'm witnessing here, and a lot of things have lined up very well with this team. So the Kings, they led the regular season totals in points, and the Warriors were number two in points. But the biggest difference here was that the Kings did this a lot more efficiently than the Warriors when you look at percentages. And also something to keep in mind, too, the Warriors have never won a series after being down two in an actual playoff series, at least in the Steph Curry era. So when I see that they came back, they actually tied the series, it gives them a little hope. And I mean, if any team is to make history and, and uh, overcome this type of adversity, I would definitely give it to the Warriors, man. So I, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Here's the scary thing. The Warriors have to win a back-to-back. Um, which means they have to steal a game in Sacramento against the Kings. It's going to be tough to do. Kings are a great home team. Kings are a great basketball team in general. And also, the Warriors stink on the road. They stink. 11-30 and 30 on the road in the regular season. They play great at home. But if you can't win those road games, they're not going to win this series. So they have to at least get one road game from the Sacramento Kings. And it's going to be tough because... The Warriors, they, they thrive off this inconsistency sometimes, and I, I don't know all the different stretches in the games. Sometimes they're consistent, sometimes they're bad, but games after game, one game they might be playing good, the other they might be playing bad. Who who knows, man? It's it's, it's one of the toughest things about the Warriors. And to when, when you judge them and you say, oh, well, they'll win game five and all of this, because when they play bad, they play horrendous. Like this, when the Warriors play bad, they stink. <laughs> like when Clay is missing, Steph is 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 crying to the refs, and Draymond's looking foolish. Wings is broke. Pool is turning the ball over. Oh my! Like this team looks horrendous when that happens. So, I, <laughs> it's 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 scary. It's a scary sight. Uh, and the Kings, when they play bad, they don't look that bad. They don't look to the extent that the Warriors look when they when you talk about teams playing bad. It just looks like Kings are having a rough stretch. So I don't know. Obviously, the Kings have earned so much respect from all the viewers and anybody watching this series. If you haven't been aware, damn it, you are aware. The Kings have arrived. They're legit. They're legit. Whether the Warriors win this series or not, Kings have proved one thing to be legit. And it doesn't matter if it's a first round, but almost anybody else that the Kings may have played, possibly we wouldn't be looking at as much as a competitive series. I, I'm that's, that's just my thoughts on it. But if I had to go with a team, I'm going with the Warriors, man. Let's do it. I still say I said the Warriors going back to the finals, so I'm going to stand tall on that. I say the Warriors are still going to go back despite all the rough patches that we've seen, despite how much of a run the Kings are giving them right now. I say the Warriors are going to get it in this series. All right, let's do it, man. Now, let's do some of the recaps here. We got some news as well coming up, but I know it's been a lot going on, especially around the league. A lot of teams are up 3-1 right now. Some teams have advanced recently. Um, but just for some teams, we know Philadelphia 76ers, they swept the Brooklyn Nets, got them boys gone. Um, the Suns and the Clippers, they are the most recent team to go to the next round. Suns, they defeated the Clippers 4-1. to one. Obviously, no Kawhi Leonard, game three, game four, and game five. As I've been saying, it's always something with the Los Angeles Clippers. Always something. And I don't blame Kawhi for his injury, but again, it's just always something, which is why I could not pick the Clippers to win this series. But the Suns, they closed it out in a phenomenal fashion, man. Devin Booker was three points shy of a 50-point game. He had 47 points. Kevin Durant finished the game with 31 points. And Deontay Ayton added 21 points to that game. And then also, too, Chris Paul even was in the double digits. So Phoenix Suns, that was a hell of a closeout in this in this game five, man. It was it was nice. So they're going to advance to the next round to play the Denver Nuggets here. 
Um, the Phoenix Suns, they'll match up against them. The Denver Nuggets, they beat the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I'm looking forward to this matchup. Low key, let's be honest, man. The Denver Nuggets are kind of a boring team. I'm I'm be 100% honest. They play great basketball. I enjoy watching them play the game. I enjoy the style that they play with. But it's low key kind of boring. It kind of gives you the the San Antonio Spurs vibes and maybe it's just the opponents that they've been playing, but to be honest, it's a little boring. They're going to match up well against the the Phoenix Suns, but ultimately if the Phoenix Suns continue to roll how they were rolling in game five, meaning Kevin Durant's giving you 30, DeAndre Ayton's giving you 20, Devin Booker's giving you 30 plus, Chris Paul giving you 15 plus in his assist totals, that's going to be tough to stop. So either way, I think I'm going with the Phoenix Suns to win this game here. Hoping for a good series, though, and I'm pretty sure the Denver Nuggets are going to make it a good series because they got some great players over there. Many people talk about Nikola Jokic not being a great defender, but they fail to realize that his supporting cast is full of defend defenders and two-way guys who can play on both ends of the ball. So that's something to be considerate of. And then kind of to go on to, to the next round, there was a team that escaped elimination. The Atlanta Hawks, they won game five. They were previously down three to one, and the Celtics had an opportunity to close it out at home, but they lost thanks to Trey Young. Trey Young, he extended this series and won in game five. He had the Atlanta Hawks win in game five. He had a buzzer beater. So after Derek White got fouled, he went down. He knocked down both free throws. Score was 117 to 116. Trey Young walked down the court. Ice cold, ice cold, man. Trey Young walked down the court. Side step three, pull up, game time. And then the Hawks won 119 to 117. So it was a crazy finish. Um, Celtics, they got to go back to Atlanta and take care of business if they want to move on to the next round. So it's going to be tough. As I mentioned, 95% of the teams lose in the playoffs after being down 3-1. to one, But ATL is trying to be a part of that 5%. So game six is going to be a lot of momentum into it. So I don't know, man. I, I'm. <laughs> it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to beat the Celtics two times in a row. They're a great bounce back team. They're great at making adjustments as well. But also, too, keep in mind, the Atlanta Hawks got Deshante Murray coming back in this game six. So it's going to be nice. But look, man, we got some news for the run. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll feed you some more information. News for the run. And then we're grading the fight between Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis. It was a lot of conversation about it. We haven't said our share, but we'll be right back in just a second. All right, news for the run. So Miami Heat's Victor Aladipo, he will miss the remainder of the postseason due to a torn tendon in his left knee. He took advantage of an open lane drive into the rim, and Aladipo collapsed during the fourth quarter of Game 3 due to that injury. And the Houston Rockets, they will hire former Celtics head coach Ime Udoka. And for the latest postseason awards in the NBA, Lori Markkinen was awarded Most Improved Player of the Year. Now, NFL, the New York Jets have traded for Aaron Rodgers. The Green Bay Packers, they gave up first round pick swap and three draft picks for Aaron Rodgers to go to the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers, to me, this wasn't a big surprise because he told y'all he wasn't playing in the league next year unless it was with the New York Jets. He said it was just on them to get the deal done. But both teams are already aware that he wanted to go play with the Jets and that he would not have it any other way. So it wasn't really much of a surprise to me. Um, he said it on, I think it was, he said it on one of them podcasts he went on. Uh, but anybody else, this is a side note, anybody else kind of notice how, you know, Aaron Rodgers is in a way duplicating that same career of Brett Favre? <laughs> like, it's kind of weird because, you know, Brett Favre only won a Super Bowl one time. Aaron Rodgers only won a Super Bowl one time. Brett Favre went to go play with the New York Jets. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers going to go play with the New York Jets. It's just kind of, it's one of those small things that you just kind of notice over time and you just pay attention to but it's kind of crazy that that's the case but news for you the report cards then came in the report cards are in ryan garcia and gervonta davis this fight here man i got a grade for you and i'm not being too nice today man i gotta call it how it was for this fight here it was pay-per-view. Obviously, people got to pay for it. But I will say, to kick it off, I am so glad I did not pay for this fight. I graded a C-plus at best. And this is me still kind of being somewhat generous 
Uh, but everything I expected to happen ended up happening in this fight. Like, I knew Javante Davis was going to win this fight. I knew it was no chance Ryan Garcia was going to win. Javante Davis is the more experienced boxer. Um, he's fought more. He has more control. He has a better IQ when he's in the ring. All of those factors kind of made me understand why Javante Davis was going to win this fight. And I will say, I wasn't expecting... I knew it was going to be a knockout, but it was... I mean, it, it just kind of happened that... It happened at an unsuspected time. I'll put it that way. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be a body punch that put Ryan Garcia down. Um, but also, man, you got to realize that takes the wind out of you. That knocks the, the hell of like a lot of wind out of you when you fight and you're already tired. And then he caught him in the perfect spot that gave Ryan Garcia like, oh, man, it gave <laughs> Like we got it, we got it right here. Like it looks crazy when we watching it, man. The slow mo, whoo! Like he caught him right under the right under the shoulder, almost. Like you, if you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like whoo! Like right between that pectoral, under the shoulder, under the armpit. Oh man, he caught him slipping. He caught him slipping. But one of the things I did notice too, obviously Ryan Garcia, he proved. Uh, as to why he is a good boxer. I'll give him that credit. I don't want to completely discredit the man and say he was trash or whatever, but he's just not on Tank's level yet in terms of boxing. He's a younger guy. He still has experience to gather before he can get in a fight like that and actually win. But some of the things I did notice that Tank had better pull, pull counters and stuff and throughout the fight. He had better times where he was just countering Garcia and Garcia could not hit him. Garcia was really trying to swing and he's quick. But he just could not hit Tank at times. I think it was maybe like one or two good hits that he actually got on Tank. Tank knocked him down in the second round. Um, to, when I seen that, I'm like, oh, I already know where this is headed. I'm already knowing where this is headed. This is exactly what I thought was going to happen. But surprisingly, Garcia got up, which was cool. But ultimately, man, I, I have to grade this a C plus. I don't want to dwell on it too much. I'll give it a C plus, and it was a solid fight. But ultimately, I'm glad I did not pay for it. I put it that way. Um, if you have feelings or you have thoughts throughout the episode, or maybe just the fight that you differ from where I I stand, give us a call 219-413-9405. Anything else throughout the episode that you heard? Maybe you think your team is coming back from a 3-1 lead. <laughs> it's not happening. 219-413-9405 is the number you need to call. I appreciate you, man, tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, a community that always makes sure your voice is heard. You can also respond to others as well if you heard something they did that you didn't like from them as well. But anyway, send this to a cousin, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, a co-worker, a neighbor, a friend that you know of, someone else who may want their voice heard. You just send this to them and tell them, hey, call in and tell this man to take that you were already telling me or whatever the case is. But until then, we will be back later on this week and so on and so on and so on. The Run With Manny Wilson podcast is brought to you by Fifth Investments. Sports betting is cool, but you can really get the most out of your money trading in the stock market. You can make money when stocks go up and you can make money when stocks go down. But all you need is a little guidance. So use the Fifth Investment Stock Trading Journal to help you get started right away. Fifth Investments is a fantastic resource for daily trade ideas, market analysis, news, and information for navigating the stock market. They got you covered with long-term, short-term, options trading, and more. So go to fifthinvestments.com and use the promo code The Run for $20. $20 off of your premier membership or just sign up for free. Trade the stock market and perfect a skill that's going to last you a lifetime. The information is not trading or investment advice. The newsletter is only a personal blog that is being offered publicly for general information purposes only.